looking at Oscar's 1951 GMC pickup. Now, if you've got a Chevy 47 to 55 first series, you're basically looking at all the same truck. Today, we're going to be going ahead and installing a drop axle. Nice thing about a drop axle is that it brings you down, but you don't have to worry about the axle hitting your uh, frame or your engine. So it's a really nice way to go to drop low nice and quick and easy. I'm going to walk you through it. Now you could have drum brakes on here or you could have disc brakes up on here. It's basically going to be about the same either way you go. If you have disc brakes on, the first thing you're going to do is take your caliper off. You're going to go ahead and you're going to leash it up somewhere because you don't want it to hang on the rubber hose. It'll break it and cause you problems. After you get your caliper secured, then you're going to go ahead and take off your hub, be it drum or disc. You're just going to take your cotter pin out. You'll take your large bolt off and you're going to want to put everything in the cap that came on the the dust cap that came on here put a rag over it so it doesn't get any dirt on here i like to put the nut back on too just to make sure that the um, threads on the spindle are are safe sometimes when you're banging around they can get messed up and it can cause you a little bit of a hassle once you get everything off uh, as far as the hub is concerned you're going to have two bolts on the bottom and two bolts on the top. You're going to go ahead and take both of those off. Generally, I like to do the bottom first and then the top. After you get this all off, you have your spindle totally exposed. You're going to go ahead and take off your lower shock. Now, sometimes you can just take it off with a lower bracket, but I like to take the shock off of the bracket because if the bracket and the shock are still attached, it can be more troublesome to reassemble it. So I do it like that just to make it nice and easy for myself. I've got everything off. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my U-bolts on the very bottom. And when I do that, I want to make sure that I don't have the jack uh, truck jacked up in any unsafe manner. I'm nice and flat. I've got my jack stands underneath there. And I don't have my springs jacked up really nice and high. I've just got uh, um, basically no static uh, pressure on there at all so that when I undo those bolts nothing's gonna go banging around or, or on me or anything so I'll go ahead and I'll get those bolts off I'll get the axle that is original on the table I'll show you how to switch your spindles over and uh, then go ahead and assemble everything back up so now what we're going to do is removing this kingpin from our spindle so we can put it on our drop axle Sometimes this can be tough. It might take you a little bit of time. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways or tell you a couple of different ways of doing it. First thing is there's a cap right on top of this. And what I'm going to do is get a drill. And I'm just going to drill right out of the center. Once that's drilled out, you can take a flathead screwdriver, bonk it in there a little bit. And generally, this will pull out. Looks like I'm going to need a stronger screwdriver. Maybe a punch here. Always remember to wear your safety glasses. Once that cap is popped off, the next thing you're going to be doing is taking this out that is located right here. I'm going to flip this down on its side and I'm going to take this nut and I'm going to go all the way to the top of the bolt. I don't want to take it off all the way because I don't want to mess up the threads on this. The kit does come with new ones, but I always like to um, save everything just to be on the safe side. Maybe one of my buddies can use this. I don't want to take the hammer and hammer on here. It might ruin things. I'll get a piece of wood, then I'll knock it down. That's going to punch it through some. I'll be able to take the nut off the rest of the way and then take that locking pin out of there. And when I do this right here, I'll get a punch, put it right on top, again being very careful of your threads. Sometimes they come out easy, sometimes they come out hard. You might need to lube those up for quite a bit of time get them greased in. Normally you don't have to use a press or anything like that on that, but you might need to do that on this kingpin. 
I cleaned this up, I shot some grease in there, and I'm going to see how cooperative this might be. Now, you can leave this on the truck, and this kind of makes it easier. I just got it on the table so I can show you guys. Let's see. All right, it's coming along. I think I'm just going to get a little bit more oil on things and let them sit up in there. Give it a couple of more wax. All right, we got lucky on this one, really. Um, if this gets tough, you might have to get a press and knock it out of there. Sometimes you can get an air hammer gun and go on there. Other times you'll have to heat these up and uh, really get mean with them. But we got lucky, and hopefully you will too. After that pins off of there, this should just kind of slide off here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this off. I'm going to clean this guy up some. Then we will be getting our spindle ready to go on our drop axle. I'll see you in just a minute. Now inside your spindle, there's these little brass bushings that look like this, and you're going to need to get them out. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll use my old um, to knock it out, but these are a bit tough. Next trick you'll do is get a socket that is just a hair smaller than the bushing, and then you can go ahead and put it in there and hopefully that'll knock out like that. If it doesn't, you'll need to get a press or what have you. So that's out. Let me get this other one out, and then I'll show you how we put everything back together. Uh, now, I've got my brass bushings out, and I'm going to inspect my holes right here. Sometimes you'll have to uh, get a little emery cloth in there and clean them up. There might be some rust residue or what have you in there. So get them cleaned up. Get a little bit of grease on them. Get a little bit of grease on these brass bushings that are going to be going in. And what I want you to notice on these is that there is a groove right here, and there's a little hole right there. Now that little hole has to got line up with the Zerk fitting here. So this is going to go in like this. You're going to do it from the uh, inside here, if you will, to install those. Because generally they won't install from the top or the bottom. You have to go from the inside. Again, your groove, your hole, your Zerk fitting. All, everybody's lined up. And sliding in. So, there we go. Now, we can go ahead and put it on here, but first I want you to take a look at this. Now, even though this is a 47 to 55 first series, we're actually using a 55 to 59 kingpin bearing kit, and uh, that's because this piece right here is a bit thicker, and it's not necessary to use the other. There's a little cap like this, it's a bit deep and big. You're going to take this brass bushing right here. You're going to put it in there. You're going to get a little grease on that. You're going to take the other brass bushing right here, or bearing if you will, really. You're going to put the two together. I want you to notice that this has got a groove in here. Those grooves are for the grease to, to be able to get in all the nooks and crannies. Now, I've got another one right here, and that's going to go right on the top. So this guy's all greased up, and it's going to go on the bottom down here. Okay, first thing I want you to notice is this little shim right here. I'm going to put one on the top at, just for a tester. I'm going to put my spindle on here, and I want you to notice that this is pointing up, so we got it on wrong. We're going to flip it back around, and it should be more like this. So we've got one shim on the top, and we're going to go ahead, and we're just seeing how many shims we need or not. Sometimes you don't need any. Sometimes you might need one or two or three. We're going to get our king pin and put it in there. And then we've got our bottom bearing or shim kit here, and we're going to go ahead and slide that in. Now, it should be kind of restrictive when it goes in. It shouldn't just fall right in, because we don't want too much slop in this. It'll wear it out again prematurely. So that doesn't have enough of a stiffness for my taste. I'm going to pull this back out. I'll get another shim on here, get a little grease on there, put my pin back in. 
when I'm putting my pin in, I'm always watching where my notch is right here to make sure it lines up with that hole. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in a little bit. And now when I install this guy, it is uh, fitting in there nice. And I can go ahead and bring my king pin down the rest of the way, looking for my slot. Make sure that bottom gets lined up. All right, and then sometimes that slot will be lined up good for you, sometimes not. You can move your spindle and it'll help you line up sometimes. Now I can go ahead and put my lock pin in, making sure that the shaved side is going next to the shaved side on the spindle king pin. I'll bring this down. I'm going to put a lock washer on. And then we'll put our nut on. And I'll just tighten that on down. Then I can go ahead and put my caps in. So I'm just going to get this started. And uh, I'll finish it off later so I can show you how to put the caps on now. <clears throat> and the caps come with the kit. I'm going to put a little bit of extra grease in there just for kicks get my cap on here and the caps are kind of like putting on seals um, you're just going to tap around the edge and get it to uh, work in there you don't want to hit on the top of it because it'll smash it out and then it won't go in at all so this will take me a little bit I'll get the one on the bottom then we'll go ahead and put this back in the truck and see how low we go Caster is whether or not your wheel axle right here is leaning a little bit forward or a little bit aft. Now the reason that it does that leaning is it helps the tires track when you're driving down the road. If it was perfectly up and down straight, you get kind of a weird driving experience. So you get this little wedge right here that it came with your truck when you took it out. And what you're going to do is if you have power steering, you're going to take your fat part of your wedge and it's going to go towards the front on your pad right here. If you don't have power steering, you're gonna go back the other way. Now there's a little bit of a nub on here, and what we're gonna do is we want to drill a hole. Either way, we're gonna be putting it. A good way to get that measured out is you get a little socket right here, and you put it right in the hole where the spring uh, bolt is gonna be pushing down, and you can set that right on there like that. Then I can go ahead and just scribe it back and forth like this, I'll go ahead and um, make sure I'm centered here, and then I'll go ahead and punch it and drill it. So after I get that done, I can go ahead and slide this guy in and start installing. So I just got a buddy and we slid the axle up underneath, put it on a jack, and then jacked it up nice and uh, slow. The springs, they have a bolt right through the middle, and on the bottom of that bolt, there's a little round uh, end on that. That round end is going to fit right into that wedge and right into the plate that the U-bolts are going to uh, bolt onto. This right here is going to go on top of the spring where the nut comes through and the bolt. Then your U-bolts right here are going to go on. Now on our truck, they're, they're different lengths. The shorter one goes to the back, longer one goes to the front, and that's because you have this shock bracket that's gonna go on right here. So getting the shim and the axle and the, everything to line up into that hole, that might take you a little bit of time. You might need a little bit of persuasion. Once I get one side set up, then I'll go ahead and I'll put my U-bolts on and I'll snug them up on there a little bit so I don't have to worry about it coming back down, but not so tight that I can't move the other side. Once I've got one side secured, now I can go on the other side and knock it around and use a little persuasion on that too. If you try to line up both sides at one time, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. It's going to take you a lot of frustration. So let me button this up a little bit and then I'll show you what comes next okay 
Just going to clean up my spindle here. I want to make sure I don't have any metal shavings on there. Of course, I'll grease everything back up before I reassemble. Whether you have disc or drum, it's just going to go back on in the reverse order. I've got the lower arm, on, or the steering arm on right here. And I just wanted to do that on there real quick so I could show you that the um, drag link here is going to go on the bottom, not on the top. And that'll give you clearance for your springs. I'm going to get this all buttoned up and I'll let you take a look at it and we'll drop it on the ground, see how low she goes. So you can see, you grab yourself a buddy in an afternoon and you're going to be able to lower yourself three inches without bottoming out on your engine, your transmission, or your frame. Now you be sure and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and check us out on YouTube. When you're there, you make sure you subscribe because we are bolting parts on every single week to make sure that when you get them, they bolt on perfect. We'll see you on the road, man.